one man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of the one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift led to our being made right with God, even though we were guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and the gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation to everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life to everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. Because one other person obeyed God, many were made righteous. God's law was given so that people could see how sinful they were. But as a people, God, but as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more and more abundant. So just as sin ruled over, our, over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? powerful scripture today. Father God, we come before you and we do thank you for the truth of scripture, the truth of this scripture, the truth that we are no longer having to stick with sin, but we can hold on to your grace. God, thank you that you give us a gift that we don't deserve. Thank you that you get us moving when it seems like everything else is stopping. God, I pray that today that our faith will be finding a firm foundation because the times around us that are so tough, that are so difficult, we've got to have something to hold on to. And you are something. God, thank you for being what we need. God, I pray for those that have never accepted you as Savior, that today would be a new day, a fresh day, a, a day when somebody says yes to you. Father, online, those folks that are watching, I pray that somebody will meet you today. Those in this room and around me today, God, I pray that somebody will meet you because they say yes to your grace. Thank you for what you're going to do for us today. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That just sounds good. In fact, when we shared that we were going to do this song. Some of you started singing it because it's just one of those. And there are a couple of the verses that are kind of difficult. Or eh, The one I sang, I just messed that up royally. Hoo -hoo, we'll try again next week, something else. But, but amazing grace. In fact, today I want to share with you, and I, I hope that I get to this PowerPoint here in about three points, where you see that God's amazing grace comes alive. Maybe you've seen that before. You've waited for something all through the years, through the months, agonized over it maybe, and then it's like, wow. Ladies, if you will, Mother's Day last weekend, um, you've had these babies. By the way, I remind you, if we guys had to be pregnant, do you know how many kids we'd have? Zero. Zero. You are God. My God, thank you so much that he gave you that ability and not me. Okay, but, but isn't it incredible to watch the pain and the difficulty of those nine months? And then that little baby. Bruce was describing for me Adelie today. Incredible grandbaby. Perfect grandchild, right? That's correct. We see something amazing happen after the difficulty. And here's what happens in our lives as well. Life is tough. Anybody? Life is full of pain, sometimes in ankles, Cindy. But God's got a plan, and he's going to use the difficulties to show us how awesome his grace is. It's going to come into view. It's going to become abundant, if you will. He's going to show us just how good he is. Listen to this. Man's way lead us deeper and deeper into self and further and further away from God. But God's ways leads us further and further from self and closer and closer to God. I like that. That's where get grace comes into view. I, I need God's grace. Any of you today? Sin empties us of that choice. In fact, sin is not an empty choice. Sin builds for me or puts in my bucket or holds for me things that I cannot deal with. In fact, if sin was an empty choice, we'd all be happy. Go do whatever you want. Drink what you want. Go do whatever you know what? It's all fine. 
But I found, and maybe you have as well, that the more sin there is, the more grief there is. That the more I continue to disobey, the more pain and more things are heavy on my shoulders, on my heart, and in my family, and in my life. It is a powerful choice to sin and continue in it. Because we think we can reach perfection. We, we think we, we can get to our dreams, but here's the deal. When we choose to go the wrong direction, our dreams get further and further and further away. Listen to this. I believe that God, we serve a great and gracious God who says, I want you to fulfill your dreams. I, I want you to have the best for your life. I, I want you to find, find, find the greatest things. But the only way for you to do that is to deny yourself and follow me. The only way for you to do that is to consider yourself crucified to sin and self and the grave, and alive to God and His grace. That's what He wants for us. In fact, the world becomes a beautiful, beautiful place the more that we see Him. But you know what? I turn on the news. Well, I turn on Facebook or all the different things around us, and I see all the hell that's going on around the world. Have you seen it this week? Pray for the peace of Israel. We're commanded to do that, by the way. Pray that God gets a hold of some of these people around us that are so difficult and so wrapped up. As, as Nancy reminded us, there's just now families who are getting back together. How difficult the last 18 months. And, and I've been listening to some people who have lost loved ones who can never, ever have that hug. and that How difficult. But God, in His grace, says, one day I'll be reunited. I'm going to write a song. Reunited and it feels... Okay, that's a different song. That's not next week's song either. Once you've experienced... Listen, once you've experienced the changing, life-changing, beautiful grace of God, you want some more. You ever done that before? Case in point, Krispy Kreme. Oh, once you've had one, you can't stop. You, you've done that. Fresh homemade bread. What, what is it for you? I, I don't know about you. You can't just eat one. Pringles, I guess. You know, you open it up. There are all different kinds of things in our lives, but I want to tell you today, when you realize that God loves you and has a great plan for your life, when you realize how sweet God's grace is for you, do you know what you're going to run back to? God. You're going to come back to His grace. You're going to remember when life begins to go in a difficult direction, when life begins to be so difficult, you're going to say, I need Him again. You've been there, some of you. You found yourself at death's door. You found yourself at the I have questions door. You found yourself at the place where you're not sure where you're going to go. Well, open the door back up because the man Jesus did something for you that will never, ever, ever be pushed away by anybody else. In fact, the Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says he loves you no matter what. Do you realize this? Your value is not based upon who you are, what you look like, or anything else around you. It's based upon the finished work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's the sermon. I'll see you all later. You're not that lucky. Once you've experienced His grace, you're going to want more of His grace. Listen, Micah 7, 18. Who is like God? Who pardons wrongdoing and passes over a rebellious act of a remnant of His people, or of His possession, excuse me. He does not retain His anger forever because He delights in unchanging love. The word unchanging love. He delights in mercy. He delights in having grace on you and on me. And what does grace look like? How does it act? What does it mean? Powerful questions wrapped up in, I think, what God is teaching us today in Romans chapter 5. Let me give you some thoughts. First of all, grace found me. Okay? Grace found me. When I was deep in a dark world... Grace found me. Can you imagine being John Newton? As I read that story earlier this week and then reread it this morning and then read it to you, I, I'm thinking, wow, how, how can you go from being a horrible man in the slave trade, treating people like second, no, last class citizens, and then turn around to fighting for their rights? That, by the way, that's God. That's what God did. He took me who doesn't deserve to have a second chance. And he gave me a second, a third, and a fourth. Y'all with me? Grace found me. Seeing it, sa the saving grace of God found me. I want you to understand today, this one man, Adam, and his sin has led us in a direction that we don't want to go in anymore. In fact, his sin, his one sin, or Adam and Eve's one sin, led to all of us understanding that we have all sinned. 
And the result of that, condemnation. You and I are both condemned by the sin of that one man because sin was passed down to you and I. In fact, you'll, you'll know this, those of your parents, you have watched your kids do wrong um, and you didn't have to teach them how to do that. It just happens. And you've done that as well. Sometimes we mess up and we're like, where did that come from? Why? Because we are predisposed. Our human nature is turned towards sin. Have you seen that, yes or no? Some of you need to wake up. Sin spread to all of us. Romans 5.12 says, And we will be ready to punish every act, listen to this, every act of disobedience. Therefore, just as sin entered through the one man and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. Death through one man, Adam. That man. The man yeah, somebody told you before, you the man. You the man. Well, don't be that man. <laughs> right? Adam and Eve. I can just go back to the Garden of Eden, and I'm not going to say it again. Maybe I should. Who sinned first? Okay, it was both of them. Because the man and woman became one in marriage, right? They both sinned. They both did wrong. Here's the deal. How many of us are guilty of sin? I'm always here to blame somebody else. Anybody else? You know, I, I do that. You know, if something goes wrong at our house, I blame Julie, right? Something goes right, I blame who? Me. Okay, that's the way it is. We, that's human nature, y'all. That's the way it happens in our lives. But we are predisposed to that wrong, and that's what happens when Adam's gift shows up in our lives, not his gift, his sin. And then you turn the other direction, and you want to claim this. I want to claim... God's gift, God's grace found me, and it found me in the person of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our wrongdoings or of our sins, according to the riches of his grace. Of whose grace? Jesus' grace. Because of his gift, because of what he's done for us, we have found this word grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. It's not just a word, it is a reality. God's grace, his goodness, his gift came to me. Romans 5, 2, just up a few verses through whom we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. Here's the deal. We have been given grace, and what does grace lead to? It leads to an F word, a big F word, and it's the word forgiveness. Some of you today desperately need, number one, to forgive yourselves. Anybody? Do you know what else you need to know? You are forgiven by the one who really matters. And that's not your spouse or your neighbor or the one that hurts you. It's the God who has your soul in his hands. If we'll just accept him, just come to know him, he says, I have forgiven every one of your sins. Are you all with me? Yes or no? Amen. Praise God for his incredible forgiveness because his forgiveness led us to be made right with God. And he deals with my sin. All of them, not just one at a time. He deals with all of them by Jesus Christ. You remember the man Adam? Well, now you have the man Jesus. In fact, throughout this Romans chapter 5 passage that I read to you, there's this constant argument. And if you look back at the theological part of it, go read some commentaries or, or, or look at some things. There's this constant back and forth. This man, that man, the law, the grace, and back and forth. And it's one-upping, but no, here's the deal. Well, one sends us to hell, the one gets us to heaven. Y'all with me? And the one that sends me to heaven does away with the one that sent me to hell. It's gone. It's washed away. It's amazing to see the grace of God come alive in our lives. This one man, this person, the other man, Jesus Christ, John 1, 14, and the word became flesh, and the word dwelt among us. The word was Jesus. And we saw his glory, the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace found me. Number two, grace amazes me. There are some things that amaze me. Are you ever amazed by anything? Go read Proverbs. And the proverb writer says there are all these six things, no, seven things that are, that are glorious. And he tells you the things that are just amazing. But, you know, one of the things that amazes me is God's amazing grace. How he can take somebody that I don't think is worthy. You, you got anybody like that? <laughs> that person did me wrong. Ain't no way I can forgive him. Here's the deal. Jesus did. You got anybody in your life like that? Or maybe you. I, I just, I can't forgive that person. I can't go there. I, I can't deal with that. Here's the deal. When Jesus forgave you, he says, on the other hand, as I've forgiven you, go forgive them. And 
if you didn't know, that's hard. Grace amazes me. Do you know what grace does? Grace relieves my fear. Isn't that one of those? Verse number one. "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believe. Great words. If you've been through difficult times, I want to remind you that if you'll just step back, take a few breaths, and take in the grace of God, you're going to be seeing the incredible grace of God. His grace amazes me. Why? Because he deals with my problem of death. Let me just give you some thoughts about death. First of all, I fear death. Anybody else? I, I don't like pain, okay? I, I, little tiny pain, I don't like pain. Big pain, I don't like pain at all. Death reminds me of pain. But Jesus says, I've defeated death. Now, there's going to be pain in this world. And he says that. Jesus did. You're going to have all kinds of trials and, and struggles. In fact, not long before he died, if you look in John chapter 14, he says, I want you to take care of it. I want you to, to realize trouble is coming. But believe in God. Do you know what that's called? That's grace right there. Because all this stuff that we're dealing with, all these difficulties, all these people that we'd rather punch than hug, all these long lines to get gas, all these unanswered questions, all these having to wear these masks, all these look past it folks because the grace of God is amazing and he's going to show us, he dealt with my fears, he's dealt with really, he's dealt with death, you see death rules when sin is not taken care of and it's all over because the sin stain or the stain and the consequences the condemnation of sin touches every one of us in fact, we're going to fret over, we're going to hurt over the pain of sin for as long as we do without Jesus. It keeps on and it keeps on like that Energizer Bunny. Here's the deal. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and it's going to hurt you and cost you more than you want to pay. I got some of that wrong. But here's the deal. The pain, the death is dealt with. The sin is dealt with by the grace that's greater than any of us know. Through many dangers, toils, and stairs, we have already come. T'was grace hath brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. I can hear him writing those words as he's on a ship, thinking I'm about to die. Here's a story for you. So Julie and I were on our honeymoon 28 years ago. Is that right, darling? 82 years ago? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 28 years ago, and we went um, deep sea fishing on our last day of our honeymoon. And I decided I'd be so good that I'd take a Dramamine. Do y'all know what that is? Okay, that deals with motion sickness. A and it had stormed the night before, so you know what I decided to do? I'd take two Dramamine. <laughs> I have heard that that boat trip, which was very short because he turned around and came back, was really bad. You know what? I have no memory of it. Why? Two Dramamine. Uh, you you want to knock me out? Dramamine, I guess, is the thing. I am amazed that God changes our minds, our outlook, and our lives when we'll just rest in Him. Not, not in the drug, Dramamine, but just rest in Him. Not, not, not in anything else going on around me. Because you see, what that doctor said... He knows his stuff. He knows his science. But maybe he doesn't know the healer. Maybe, maybe all that stuff that's been going on in your head, you aren't any good. You don't have any value. Let me just ask you to rethink that one. To reread something and realize that your value is based upon what God said. And he says, your value is so valuable. You are so valuable to me that I'll pay the highest price, and that's my son, Jesus Christ. The one man, condemnation. His name is Adam. The other man, Jesus. His grace is amazing. John 1.16, for his fullness we all have received 
grace upon grace. And you know what that grace does? It leads me to victorious living. It leads me to victory over sin. Not by what I've done, but by what he's done. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under the law, you are under grace. That's shouting ground right there, folks. We can become Pentecostal and leave our Baptists behind because my sin has been... uh, I can abandon it because why? Jesus abandoned it. He covered it. He claimed it. He took care of it. And it's gone because I am under grace, not under law. Why do I keep continuing to go that way? Why do I still act like that? Here's the deal. Sometimes I have to make myself understand that I don't have to be controlled by the bad stuff because the good stuff is true about me. This Jesus, the same man Jesus who did this for me, he'll do it for you. Let me tell you, grace found me. Grace amazes me. And here's something else that grace does. Grace secures me. It holds me. When I think about his grace, when my heart is is, um, running with his grace, the more I see that my life is secure in him. See, See, what does tomorrow hold? I don't know. Let me tell you what I did. Monday night, I had this feeling I should go get gas. So I went and got beans. No, that's a different story. Some of you like that story. But I, I went and got gas, and I bought gas across the street for two fifty nine. It was two eighty nine the next day. Hey, some of you people almost call them fools. I don't do to do that. Isn't, isn't that what happens, right? We deal with sin, we deal with the mess, and then we pay a high price. Today, folks, we have an opportunity to say yes to God's grace. And you know what happens afterwards? He claims me as his own. You ever been going somewhere and you see somebody far off? And you're like, oh, they kind of look familiar. Oh, they really do look familiar. And you get up close. And you're like, oh, that's my kid. That's my cousin. That, you know, that's what happens. Let me remind you of this. When God's amazing grace, you begin to think about it and look at it. Well, that's cool. That's awesome. Well, get up a little bit closer and read more about it. Spend some time with him. And you know what happens when you get up face to face with God? You say, wow, amazing grace. The closer I get to it, the more I see him. This word, grace, builds hope in my life. His word, the word, builds hope in my life because his grace becomes a reality. Ephesians 4, 7, but to each of us, grace was given according to the measure of God's gift. Now, Adam's gift, God gave grace. Adam gave a sin, and, and in his sin, there is no hope when trouble abounds. In fact, when Sin abounds, trouble abounds, condemnation comes, and all of us sin. Verse number 19, he tells us that over and over again. Because one person disobeyed, many of us became sinners because of one act of disobedience. Look at 2 Corinthians 10.6. 2 Corinthians 10, 6, and we will be ready to punish every act of obedience or disobedience once your obedience is complete. Your sin has to be punished. Y'all hear me this, say this. Sin has to be punished. Do you get that? Say yes. There has to be a punishment for it. There has to be something for it. And here's the deal. Because of God's wonderful, amazing grace, sin is dealt with. Does it give you a get out of jail free card? Sort of, kind of. How about a get out of hell free card? Yeah, you didn't do anything to get to heaven, but Jesus did something to get you to heaven. We became sinners because of the one man. And because of that one man, we lack hope. This world lacks hope. Let me remind you who has hope. Jesus people. Jesus people. Can I remind you something else? You is Jesus people. Tomorrow when the world's crashing or the bombs are coming or... You're a Jesus girl. You're a Jesus guy. So when all this difficulty, chaos is coming your direction, remember to look at his grace. Come full. Come look at it. Why? When we've been there 10,000 years bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing his praise than when we first begun. Sing his praise because in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the seas, all, all tearing you to pieces, his grace is still good enough. 
Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble and by it many become defiled. I want to remind you today when you let the world and the chaos and all the difficulties and all the sin bear down on you and you don't do anything about it, it will continue to lead in a negative way. It will continue to lead in a way that the results are not really very good. In fact, they're painful. So therefore, let's turn our minds to something that changes it. Its name is Jesus. By one man, by one man's act, Adam, we're condemned. By one man's act, Jesus, we're made whole. By righteousness, by one righteous act. As I said a few minutes ago, you have this play back and forth in, in, in Romans chapter 5 when it says the one man Adam and the one man Jesus, the one man's sin, the one man's death on the cross, the one man's condemnation, the one man's forgiveness. So which is the man? My man. My man's name is Jesus. And he changes my life. How? Because one sin led to one death. Oh, I'm going to have to pay for that death. But one gift, Jesus gives me a... I may have to die in the flesh, but I will never have to die in the spirit. He made me right with God. Not based upon what I have done. Listen to this. Not based on my acts, but based upon his act. His one act. Romans eleven six. For if it is by grace... For if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works, since otherwise grace is no longer grace. If we didn't need grace, praise God, but we need grace. We need to understand that we are all sinners. That one act of disobedience led to the fact that we need somebody to obey. And I couldn't do it on my own. Because of sin, we needed somebody to take my place and become righteousness. And I did because of Jesus. You know what? Grace found me. Grace amazes me. Grace secures me. And here's the last thing. Grace leads me to praise. The more I see his grace, the more I understand his grace. H have you ever been at one of those places, you, you know, like you're on vacation, and you, you go out to this beautiful, let's just say over the ocean, and they've got this big thing. I don't know what you call them, but you put a quarter in it, and then you go look through the eye holes, and then you can see... Wow. Let's just say it's at the Grand Canyon. Wow. I mean, with my eye, I can see a little bit. But give me some binoculars or a telescope, and I can, I can see. Let me tell you what. Through the binoculars or the telescope or the good eyes of Jesus, I can see who I am now. Because I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see. Let me remind you today, I was lost in sin, but now I'm alive to God and forgiven. Listen to this. I, I was headed headlong to hell, but now I'm excited because I get to go to heaven. Let me remind you of this. That one man, Adam, is going to take me in the wrong direction. That one man, Jesus, is going to take me in the right direction. And the choice is yours. The choice is mine. Which one is your man? His grace leads me to praise. Seeing His grace makes me want to praise Him because I am weighed down in my sin. Verse number 20, it says, The law was sent to show you how big a sinner you are. Pull up the mirror, y'all. Take out the list of laws. How many of them have you broken? Well, I'm not a bad person. I've only done... By the way, there's ten commandments, not suggestions. And Jesus said, if you broke one, you broke them all. He said, if you thought in your heart you're angry at somebody and you thought about killing them, might as well. You looked at that lady, guys, you might as well. Here's the deal. I'm guilty. Jesus said, I got it covered. All I got to do is say yes to Jesus. By his grace. John 1 17, the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Romans 7 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law, for I would not have known what coveting really was 
if the law had not said you shall not covet. You see, I was lost, undone, blind, and in trouble. Sin ruled my life, and it brings even more death into my life. But praise God, here's the deal, Galatians 2.21, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, Christ died needlessly. And I want to tell you today, Christ didn't die needlessly. He died because I desperately needed his amazing grace. I've been overwhelmed by him. In fact, the more I see my insecurity, the more I see my vulnerability, the more I see my emptiness, the more I see my need for his grace and his goodness. The more I see my frailty, the more I understand how sweet his forgiveness is. The more I, I see how difficult sin is, the more I see that that Savior is for me. I remind you today that Jesus is the one incredible one. 1 Timothy 1.14 The grace of God, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Paul said it. I am amazed at his grace. His grace becomes more and more abundant. This is really good. In verse number 20, God's law was given so that people, all people, could see how sinful they were. But as sinful people... But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more and more abundant. So if you will, I want you to get out your spiritual binoculars. I want you to open up the eyes of your heart. And I want you to go look at God's grace. It really is amazing. One of my favorite videos. Do you ever get on some of you, on Facebook, and you start watching a video, and then it leads to another video, and then another video, and then another video, and then another video. And TikTok's the same way, you know, just another one and another one. It just takes... But, but he, I, I remember this one video I watched about um, an older gentleman, about my age, about 50, <laughs> who um, was colorblind. And his family bought him some kind of glasses that allowed him to see. And, and again, we're talking about a big burly man, kind of like a Paul McKee, okay? Big guy. You know, arr, arr, you don't hurt me. Huh? And as he put on these glasses and he started looking around his front yard, he starts crying because he ain't never seen colors like that before. Isn't that amazing? Some cool invention. Some of you are so lost in your sin that you can't see the beauty of God's amazing grace. Can I just ask you for a minute to put on those really cool grace glasses and look around. You see, there's some stories sitting in this room. And if you'd hear his story, you're going to say, his grace is amazing. If you'll just hear her story, his grace, right? Your story and his grace is amazing. Today, do you need that? I do. I need to see His grace and hear His grace because the more my sin is revealed, the more grace I need. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, so that you through His poverty might become rich. The man. Come on now. The man Adam. The man Jesus. Lost and undone, blind and headed to hell. The man Jesus, saved by his amazing grace. Help while we're on earth and a ticket to heaven to boot. Which man is yours? May we be amazed by his grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Father God, we come before you today, and we do thank you for your amazing, incredible grace. God, I pray for those, including myself, that often get overshadowed, overlooked, overwhelmed by the difficulties of grace. No, the difficulties of sin. I pray that you allow us to look at you, Father, for the very first time. Maybe for the tenth time. Maybe for the hundredth. 
But God, we need to be reminded often of how good you are. Father, I thank you that you became my Savior some 30 years ago. 30, oh wow, 35, 40 years ago. God, thank you. And I thank you that the same grace that saved me then saves today. For by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves, because then we could boast. God, thank you for the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We praise you in his precious name. Amen. Will you stand with me? We're going to sing one more song.